This timeout is sponsored by Augie's Locker Room. Augie's features the largest collection of Notre Dame football memorabilia and gifts, including rare and hard to find items. Hey, this is Augie, Augie's Locker Room. Website, augieslockerroom.com. Visit us here or the website. Tim Priest for Tim O'Malley, John Bryce. We have just arrived here outside of Notre Dame Stadium, having been inside Notre Dame Stadium with Marcus Freeman. Coming off the bye week as Notre Dame prepares to play Wake Forest. Not a whole lot of talk about Wake Forest. I would imagine that will spill over to Thursday. A lot of injury news, personnel news. Rocco Spindler, knee injury, will miss this week and will be out for the rest of the season. That likely means that Billy Shrouth will be the starting right guard. Uh, Zeke Corral is not ready yet to uh, declare himself ready to play against Wake Forest coming off the concussion. He's still in con concussion protocol, so that could lead to Ashton Craig as the starting center. Uh, Luke Telich has been a regular on Notre Dame's coverage teams. He suffered a broken collarbone in practice. And, of course, Andrew Kristoffic had the, the sprained ankle mm -hmm. foot in the Clemson game, and he is still uh, a, a possibility playing this weekend. Just wanted to get that stuff out of uh, out in the open there because now we're looking at guys uh, an offensive line that is uh, a little bit makeshift going into the last three games. Yeah, it's actually kind of exciting though I think for Notre Dame fans. Ashton Craig is the center of the future. You've been touting him as the center of the future for a while from what you've heard from from the coaching staff behind the scenes and Billy Schroth is a guy that everybody wanted to see play. Now, I, I don't, you know, obviously Rocco Spindler's a guy everybody wanted to see before they wanted to see Billy Schroth play, but that's the nature of the beast. So they're going to get, you're going to get your chance to see Billy Schroth. It's going to help his development. It's bad news for Spindler, obviously, because like we mentioned, this, I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but like we mentioned with some of the wide receivers getting hurt, it really just hurts their development when you lose that much time. And this will not help Rocco Spindler going into the offseason. And I think he needed another really good offseason to kind of cement his role. Yeah. I don't know how serious it is, but we'll find out. I left it's another sur it's surgery. So yeah, it's, sur yeah. it's surgery. So so that's enough to to, uh, to set him back a little bit. I, I left out another player, Matt Salerno. I know uh, Notre Dame fans weren't real high on him being in the rotation. Then when they lost him early, they wanted Matt Salerno back. It sounds like he's getting close to being able to play before the end of the regular season. Yeah, he had the broken leg that uh, really set him back. And, and frankly, when you talk to people on this staff and you talk to people in this program, he's been missed desperately. He's been really missed against Clemson. He was really missed at Louisville. He had developed a nice rapport with Sam Hartman. There was an absolute trust there, especially on third down situations that Matt Salerno would be exactly where Sam Hartman expected him to be, wanted him to be, and needed him to be. Um, and because of injuries and other setbacks, Sam Hartman has not cultivated that type of relationship with the other guys. And, and we've seen how that's limited Notre Dame's offense here the back half of the season uh, in terms of the movement on the offensive line, you know, with, with Rocco having to have surgery. Um, it's good news, bad news. We all hate it for Rocco, um, but there's so much excitement about um, what they're able to do at the center position. There's so much excitement about Billy Shrouth and then what does this potentially open up for a Pendleton? There's a lot of optimism in this program about what Notre Dame could look like on the interior of its offensive line moving forward next year. And so again, unfortunate that it comes because of injury, exciting because you can't replicate what it means to play in these games down the stretch. If these guys get a lot of extra reps for these last two games and then go into bowl prep, getting significantly force-fed reps and more action, I think that's incredibly, incredibly value moving forward. A couple of weeks ago, Marcus Freeman was asked about uh, what he might do with the quarterback position moving forward. He indicated to us at the time that would be discussed during the second bye week. It was discussed, and Marcus Freeman was willing to come right out and say that they need a fourth quarterback. Yeah, and it's – look, he also – Use logic when he said that we, we've known they were going to look for a fourth quarterback in the a quarterback in the portal. You absolutely need four quarterbacks as you go into the spring, because quarterback is probably going to transfer from your team when he doesn't win a job. That is across college football these days, and it's been across college football for many decades. It's just now you could easily transfer and go play somewhere. You have to have four entering the spring. You don't have to have four entering August. But I think his point is he's always going to want four quarterbacks when it's portal season. And right now, obviously, you might want a starting quarterback in the portal. I think that's where they're leaning. He's not going to commit to that publicly that we're going to get a starting quarterback because that's really bad for your backup quarterbacks right now. But you have to have four nowadays going into the spring. That's that's a no-brainer and an easy thing for him to answer these if days. If you go into the spring with three, you might come out of the spring with two. You will so come out of the spring with two. <laughs> so that's absolutely why you have to do that. Talking about receivers, I you know, I asked about if there were any young guys, the typical 
cliche question coming out of a bye. Is there any, any, are there any of the younger players you want to get involved in the game more? And he went back to the receivers, the freshman receivers of, of Faison, uh, Great House, and Flores. They have to play more. Flores has emerged a little bit, hasn't been a uh, consistent in terms of percentage target. Mm -hmm. Great House flashed early in the year and then not much. Faison, the few times he's had opportunities has looked pretty darn good. Yeah, absolutely. And Faison has continued to kind of wedge himself into being a non-negotiable part of their plans moving forward. He is that good. He has developed a bit of an alpha persona when you speak with people uh, within the program. And obviously he is right now, uh, along with Chris Tyree, Notre Dame's best pure downfield threat because of what he has from a from a raw speed standpoint. It's been tough on, on Jaden Greathouse. Uh, Tim O'Malley has made the point uh, very astutely uh, several times. His injury and his hamstring issue was so debilitating for his development right yeah. as he was really beginning to develop that trust and rapport with Hartman that we noted that was missing. So those are significant elements moving forward. Those guys have to continue uh, to play very well and they have to continue to adjust. And, and they've got to continue uh, to be stable at their positions because, look, it's, it's not fair to them to um, they've earned the right to play as freshmen. It's not fair to them that they ha are having to carry so much onus as freshmen because of the dereliction of duties from the previous coach. That's what I feel about Rico Flores, not to interrupt. I feel it, his percentage of targets versus catches isn't great, but it probably can't be as the de facto 1B in every game. Rico Flores probably would have been an awesome number four wide receiver for Notre Dame coming in and playing less. He'd probably be more productive as the number four wide receiver on a better offense. It's a tough situation when your best players you hope are all young freshmen. Well, uh, yeah, and you know, you get targeted once or twice a game. Yeah. You're, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to have a perfect percentage. But, you know, I, I brought this up before we start recording. Uh, it, it's like, okay, what are some of the things, Marcus Freeman was asked, some of the things that you pointed to during the during the second bye week and he said you know about maybe taking better advantage of the easy access throws which is contrary to what was said a couple weeks ago when he was talking about getting the ball down the field a little bit more this is kind of a function though of what has happened in games what has happened with sam hartman the clemson game in particular if you're not going to be efficient throwing the ball downfield which is part hartman's fault part the receiver's fault you've got to get the ball some easy access throws i think I think Audrick Esme has been targeted. He's made a catch on all but one of the times right. that he's been targeted, like 14 out of 15 or, or whatever the number is. But it's kind of contrary to what we've been talking about. But when the offense sputters like it does, you've got to do something, right? you got to get the ball in the hands of running backs or receivers in the, in the flat in order to get that passing game going. Yeah, and I think Marcus Freeman mentioned, look, we want to take shots still, but what we really cannot have is so many three and outs. You need, they need to stay ahead. They need to stay ahead of the chains and pick the exact right time to take shots. If you're if you're a better offense, you can take shots because you feel like you might want to take a shot here. If you're in the situation their offense is in, you have to know when you're going to be able to take these shots. If it could be viable, it will work. And lastly, during the second bye week, uh, Marcus Freeman and the coaching staff met with the players who do have another year of eligibility, whether it's a fifth year or sixth year because of COVID. Uh, and so they've had those conversations. JB, why don't you relate what uh, what Coach Freeman had to say about that? Well, noteworthy, I think that 31 Notre Dame players, uh, according to Marcus Freeman, will uh, run out of the tunnel and be recognized as part of Senior Day festivities this afternoon against Wake Forest. That does not mean that all 31 of those guys are playing their last ever home game for Notre Dame, but that's the, the potential. Um, there are significant decisions looming ahead. Marcus Freeman joking about Joe Alt. Joe Alt will be a top 10 pick. He's a future franchise left tackle in the NFL, but there are other significant decisions. You look at Xavier Watts, who's played himself very much onto NFL draft profiles when you talk to scouts. Uh, you look at a guy like Maris Leofau, who's had such a strong season that he also has gained much more depth in terms of how closely NFL teams are evaluating them. So um, it's recruiting season as Notre Dame tries to close out its 2024 20, signing class in totality before that signing period in December. It's also recruiting and evaluation season to see exactly who Notre Dame would like to have return and who might be at the end of their Irish careers. Beautiful day here in South Bend. From here, we go uh, back inside to do Irish Illustrated Insider. Check us out on irishillustrated.com.